So in today's notes, we're going to take a look at trigonometric ratios or just simply trig ratios. For any right triangle, certain ratios are constant for the acute angles in the triangle. These ratios for these acute angles allow us to find a missing angle or a missing side when given some information about the right triangle. The sine, cosine, and tangent are the most commonly used trigon uh, trigonometric ratios. So using the table of trig ratios, find the angle measure if. So back when I was in high school, we used to have to use um, a table of trig ratios. And that's this table right here. I'm going to show you, okay, how to use the calculator. And you will no longer, um, or you won't use this table. But I thought I would at least show you. So in using the table, it says find the angle measure if the sine of the angle is approximately 0 0.6157. So we're in the sine column. And let's look here. Do we see in this column the 6157 or 0.61? So I'm going to make that bigger. So right here, uh, 0.6157 is right here. So the angle is going to be a 38 degree angle, OK? And I'll explain more what this table means, whoops, in just a second. So we'll go back to day two notes. So that angle is 38 degrees. Now we're going to find the measurement angle whose cosine is approximately 0 0.6428. So now we're going to go to that cosine. Let me zoom on again. The cosine column. And it's 0.6428. So 0.64, we're over here in that column. 0.6428, that's right here. And the angle is going to be 50 degrees. And the tangent of an angle, so it's 5.1446. So tangent is 5 points. So I'm going to move this down. That's in here. Tangent's the last column. And 5.1146 tells me the angle is 79 degrees. So what we're going to do right now is take that information and I'm going to show you some things with the graphing calculator. So once again, this is 79 degrees. So if I open up the calculator and in order to do the trig calculations, our calculator needs to be in the correct mode. So let's press the mode button on your graphing calculator. We need to be in degree mode. So go down where it says radian and go to the right to highlight degree, hit enter, and then scroll down. I like to get out of that, so second quit, and then again press mode. And degree should be highlighted. So now if I type in um, for a 30 degree angle or 38 degree angle, the trig buttons are above the comma, left parenthesis, and right parenthesis, or your trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. So the first one said it was a sine. Okay, so on the calculator, we're going to press the sine of 38 degrees to see if we get that decimal. So back to the calculator. The sine of 38 degrees, hit enter. And there's the decimal 0 0.61566. If you're going to round, right, we don't round unless we're told to. But if you do do a calculation and you want to round, you should always take it out at least four decimal places. But I wouldn't encourage you to round. Okay, now let's try the next one, the cosine of 50. So cosine is above the left parenthesis. So cosine of 50 
and we should get that decimal that we had on the table, 0.6428. Good, and the last one, the tangent of 79 is 5.1446. So again, big things about the calculator, you need to be in degree mode, just a recap, and the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons are all right above the comma, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, okay? And you can take the sine and cosine of any acute angle. So let's try the sine of 60. Cosine of 60. Since we were just taking a look at our um, special right triangles, and then the tangent of 60 in the notes from last class, and then the sine of 45, cosine of 45, and tangent of 45. And it looks like you don't have to close the parentheses as I didn't on the line up from the bottom, the cosine of 45, but I would always include your parentheses just to be safe. Okay, back to the notes. So more about what these ratios mean, and that's what we're gonna focus today. So what exactly is a sine ratio? So definitions. So the sine of an angle, so you need to have an angle first to look at the ratio, okay, of two specific sides of that triangle. When I want to find the sine of an angle, we look at the length of the leg, because again, we're in a right triangle, opposite the hypotenuse, or I'm sorry, opposite the angle the length of the leg opposite the angle, divided by, or comparing it to, the length of the hypotenuse. So um, those little lines to the right, we look at the length of the leg opposite to the length of the hypotenuse. So we can shorten it with O over H. For the cosine of an angle, we want to compare the two sides um, adjacent to the angle. So we're going to look at the length of the leg adjacent to the angle, still over the length of the hypotenuse. Or we're comparing that ratio, so the length of the leg adjacent to the hypotenuse. So A over H. And then last, the tangent ratio compares the length of the leg opposite of the angle to the length of the leg adjacent to the angle. So opposite over adjacent is O over A. And there is a saying, just as you remember um, or use the saying, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. To help you remember these, uh, we can use the so for sine is opposite over adjacent. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So soca. TOA. So to practice this below, so given the diagram of triangle uh, ABC, one thing I want you to note is that your vertices are all labeled always with capital letters. And the length of your side is noted in lowercase letters. Two, I want you to note that opposite angle A is we have lowercase a. So the side opposite angle A, they noted as length A, and the side opposite angle B as length B, and opposite angle C, we have the lowercase c, okay? All right, so let's fill in these ratios. So for the sine of angle A, now we don't have any values yet, um, so just doing it in terms of symbol. So if I'm looking at this angle here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine would be length A, because that's opposite, over hypotenuse C. So 
So the first thing we could have done for both, since I've defined the sine of A and B, is put C in the denominator, because it's comparing the length of the side opposite to the hypotenuse in every um, sine ratio. And find the, rate, the sine ratio for B, that's the length of the leg opposite angle B to the hypotenuse C. So let's get rid of that. Cosine. Cosine is A over H, ka. So we can go ahead and fill in the C's as it's comparing the side adjacent to the hypotenuse. So the side adjacent to angle A, okay, so the two options are A and B. Well, we know that A is opposite, okay, so B must be adjacent. And also, too, the side that's adjacent is the side along with the hypotenuse that forms the angle. So next to angle A, if you want to look at it that way as well, adjacent to is B. And then if I'm looking at angle B right here, um, the side that forms angle B with the hypotenuse or the side next to the angle and that's not the hypotenuse is A. And last is tangent. So tangent's opposite over adjacent. So looking at angle A, opposite A over adjacent is A over B. And looking at angle B, opposite to adjacent here is going to be B to A. So they are reciprocals. Okay. If you look at this table here, if you do have a highlighter, I just want to note one thing, and we'll talk about this more later, is that the sine of A, and A is one of the acute angles, that's equal to, so over here, the cosine of B, which is the other acute angle. And then we also have, so grabbing a different color for the highlighter, the sine of B, is equal to the cosine of A. So let's write that out. I'm going to go back to the pen. Let's pick purple. So note that the sine, use capital letter for angle A, is equal to the cosine of B. Okay, and the sine of B, so the other acute angle, is equal to the cosine of A. So A and B are the two acute angles, and the sine of one acute angle is equal to the cosine of the other. Okay, moving to example one. So in right triangle ABC, well, let's draw it. It says C is the right angle. It doesn't need to be drawn to scale. So we'll put A here, B here. It says the length of AC is 12 and AB is 13. Well, I recognize this. This is a Pythagorean triple. So the missing side, not sure if I need it just yet, I may or may not, but side CB is 5. It's the 5, 12, 13. Pythagorean triple. Now to find the ratio, it wants the tangent of A. So remember, tangent of any angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So opposite angle, in this case, the tangent of A. So let's highlight angle A. Opposite angle A is the 5, and then adjacent to angle A is the 12. So we didn't need the hypotenuse at all. But I did need the hypotenuse to find length BC. So tangent is 5 twelfths. If I didn't know the triple, then we would have had to have found BC using the Pythagorean theorem. So that's why it's important, if you have yet to, to memorize those Pythagorean triples. All right, so using the triangle to the right, so that's our special right triangle, or one of them. Write the following trig ratios as a fraction. So I'm going to do this side first, as that's all in reference to the 30 degree angle, so I can highlight that. 
and then I'll look at the 60 degree angle. So here's the 30 degree angle, and let's write at the top, so ka toa. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse as well as cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the hypotenuse for each of those. So these are both over 2. So the side opposite for sine of 30 is 1. And the side adjacent to 30 is radical 3. And then last, the tangent of 30 is opposite over adjacent. Uh, so that would be 1 over radical 3. But again, we can't leave our answer with an irrational denominator. So to rationalize it again, we multiply by radical 3 over radical 3 to get radical 3 over 3. So here are our answers. And just to take uh, a break and actually prove this to you or show that it is making sense, if I go back to the calculator and type in the sine of 30, you can see we get 0.5 or 1 half. If I type in the cosine of 30, we get that decimal. If I type in the fraction that I got for the cosine of 30, which is radical 3 divided by radical or 2, you see we get that decimal. So that is correct. And then let's last type in radical 3 over 3. So radical 3 divided by 3. And then type in the tangent of 30. We should get that decimal. And we do. So we are correct. So you can always check your answers using that graphing calculator. All right, to the other side. Sine, cosine, whoops. I had to grab the pen. Sorry about that. Sine, cosine, and tangent of 60. Well, once again, since sine and cosine are both over the length of the hypotenuse, these are both going to be 2. And then the sine of 60. So looking at the 60 degree angle, opposite the 60 is radical 3. And adjacent to is the 1. And as we knew from the other side, that note that we made, the cosine of an angle is going to be equal to the sine of its complement or the other two, or the other acute angle. And then the sine of 30 is equal to the cosine of 60. Okay, 30 and 60 are complements. They are the two acute angles of the right triangle. So they will always, that will always work out to be true. And then last, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of 60, again, was radical 3 over adjacent 2. Oh, not 2. Adjacent is 1. And really, um, when you have a 1 for a denominator, you should just go ahead and divide or reduce it. All right. Using your calculator for number 3, it says to find the sine of 42 and the cosine of 61. So let's open that up. I'm going to type them both in, and then we'll write the decimal. It says the nearest ten thousandths, with the, which is the fourth decimal place. So sine of 42. And if you haven't been using your calculator with me, uh, please do so. Calc uh, cosine of 61. So the sine of 42 rounded to the nearest decimal place, fourth decimal place, is where the 1 is. So to the right of the 1 is a 3. That's, that's going to be 0.6691. And then below the cosine of 61, the 8 is in the fourth decimal place, and to the right is a 0. So we're going to uh, just stop at the 8. So again, that's approximately 0 0.6691. And this was approximately 0 0.4848. Number 4 in right triangle ABC sees the right angle. AC is 24. CB is 7 and AB is 25. Yes, that is a triple. We're going to take the sine of B and it says to add it to the cosine of B. Well, sine of B, let's see. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite angle B is 24, hypotenuse 25. So sine of B, we can note the 
fractions first is 24 25ths. And then the cosine of B is, so adjacent to B is the 7 over 25. So now if I add those two together, our sum, so sine of B plus the cosine of B is 24 over 25 plus 7 over 25. So you keep the denominator, add the numerators, and we get 31 over 25. If theta is a positive acute angle, so remember theta is just a symbol that represents the measure of an angle. So let's draw a right triangle. So if you see trig, we know we have a right triangle. It doesn't matter where you put theta. I'm going to put theta down here. And it says that theta is a positive acute angle. Um, and the sine of theta is 6 over 10. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the side opposite theta is the 6. The hypotenuse is 10. Find the value of tangent of theta. And tangent's opposite over adjacent. Well, we know the side opposite. Okay, we've got the 6. We're just missing the side adjacent. I know the triple, so I know it's an 8 for the 6, 8, 10. But if you didn't know, you'd have to spend the time to do Pythagorean theorem. So this is going to be 6 eighths. And again, when possible, we always reduce. So the tangent of theta, uh, 3 goes in here twice, 3 goes in there four times. Or, um, I did that backwards. That's too late. And I'm tired. They're both divisible by 2. So we divide the 6 by 2, we get 3. Divide the 8 by 2, you get 4. Tangent of theta is 3 fourths. All right, the last two. The last two involve our special rate triangle, so I'm going to go ahead and first draw them both. So the 45, 45, 90, remember that was the isosceles right. And the 30, 60, 90 has a longer leg, a shorter leg, so I'm going to draw the long leg here. Shorter leg here. So opposite the longer leg must be the larger angle. So that's 30 and 60. So opposite the longer angle is the 60. The shorter is 30. So back up to this one. Use special right triangles to write the cosine of 45 degrees as a fraction. OK? So we don't have any side lengths given, so this is all going to be algebraic. And we know that the relationship is x, 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 radical 2. So if I find the cosine of 45, you can use either angle, OK? So according to that angle, the side, again, cosine ka, so that's adjacent to hypotenuse. Adjacent to 45 is an x. It's going to be x divided by the hypotenuse of x radical 2. Now, x over x, they cancel out, so it's 1 over 1 radical 2, and we have to rationalize. So multiply by radical 2 over radical 2, and 1 times radical 2 is radical 2, and radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. So the cosine of 45 as a fraction is radical 2 over 2. And last, once again, since we don't have any sides given numerically, let's put them in algebraically. So we know opposite the 30 is some number. We double that number to get the hypotenuse. And then opposite the 60 is whatever this number is down here, radical 3. And the sine of 60. So here's the 60, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse equals um, n radical 3 over 2n. So the n's can cancel out. We get radical 3 over 2.